Li Chunxin is popularly known as Mao's last dancer. This is from the title of his best-selling memoir, which recounts his journey from being an impoverished village boy in China to becoming a world-famous professional dancer now living in Australia. In the middle of this journey was his devotion to his home country and then defection to America. The book was adapted into an internationally acclaimed feature film in 2009. Lee's defection to the United States in 1981 grabbed headlines around the world. He had arrived two years earlier as a cultural exchange student with the Houston Ballet. And there, he developed a taste for American individualism and self-expression. With the intervention of George Bush Sr., who was vice president at the time, Lee was allowed to stay in the United States. He danced for the Houston Ballet for 16 years during which he wowed international audiences and won several awards at international competitions. As lead dancer of the Houston Ballet, Lee frequently performed as a special guest for some of the world's most prestigious ballet companies. It was while performing in London that he met ballerina Mary McKendry from Queensland and they fell in love. They married in 1987, and eight years later, they moved to Australia with their children. In Australia, he was warmly welcomed at the Australian Ballet. He became a principal dancer and later sat on its board of directors. Lee is the sixth of seven sons born into a poverty-stricken family in Qingdao in Shandong province. He remembers that in certain years, people in his village ate tree barks to survive. Despite the poverty, his childhood was full of love. He says his parents taught him hard work, perseverance and the importance of family. As a young boy, Lee was devoted to the Communist Party and joined the party's Youth League. One day, a delegation from Madame Mao's Beijing Dance Academy arrived at Lee's school to find suitable children to study ballet. They went past Lee, but as they were walking out of the classroom, the teacher, who knew his talent, tapped the shoulder of one of the representatives and pointed, What about that boy? That boy was Lee, and he was invited to the academy. Lee was 11 years old when he left home to begin a harsh training regime. It went from 5.30 in the morning to 9 in the evening, six days a week. Even after the training hours, he practiced on his own. He would practice his turns by candlelight. To build strength in his legs, he hopped one-legged up and down the stairs with heavy sandbags tied to his ankles. He trained for seven years, after which he graduated as one of the best dancers China has produced. While Li was training in Beijing, he caught the eyes of one of the world's most respected ballet teachers, Ben Stevenson. Stevenson was artistic director of the Houston Ballet at that time, and was in Beijing on a cultural exchange. As part of the exchange, Stevenson offered a scholarship to Lee to continue his studies at the Houston Ballet. And from there, his path to Australia was set. In 1997, Lee was forced to take a break from dancing when he was with the Australian Ballet. An ankle injury put him on the sideline. To occupy himself, he enrolled in financial courses and became a stockbroker. When he could dance again, he kept his job as a stockbroker. He was a stockbroker in the morning, then rushed to the Australian Ballet for rehearsals or performances. Lee followed this routine for two years. He says those were his best years as a dancer. He says he reached a level that he thought he could never reach. This was a level where technique and artistry were seamlessly combined. He said, when I was younger, I might have been better technically, but I was lacking artistic maturity. Lee retired from ballet in 1999 at the age of 38 and joined Bell Potter Securities, one of Australia's largest stockbroking firms. 
In 2012, Lee returned to the arts, accepting the position of artistic director at Queensland Ballet. Under his leadership, the company achieved high artistic levels. It also saw remarkable growth in its membership and audiences. Lee loves Australia for being a family-oriented, generous country, a place where he can bring up his children to be close to an extended family. But he says, China is always on his mind. I love China, and I love the Chinese people. That will never change. He says he takes every opportunity to perform an ambassadorial role, enhancing the understanding between the two peoples. In 2019, Lee was honoured as Officer of the Order of Australia for Distinguished Service for the Performing Arts.